G'day everyone and welcome to this user guide for the new Continuum Preview shader for 1.8.9. Now this version you can only get from our Facebook page as it is just a preview to gain feedback about the new shader options tabs. Once you've downloaded it and you go in to select your shader, you can now access the shader options button. In here you'll be faced with a range of different options that you can choose from. Uh, if you're not interested in fully customizing the shader how you see fit, you can just choose a predefined profile, which is high, ultra, low, medium, and standard. Now, from testing so far, uh, the frame rates have dropped by about 5 FPS in each of these profiles. Uh, we're still trying to work out exactly why this is happening. Alright, now if you want to actually go through and customize the shader even further, you can go into each of these tabs to change certain effects. Now we'll start off with shadows. In shadows, you can turn soft shadows on or off. You can increase the shadow map resolution. And you can also increase or decrease the shadow distance. Uh, there is also now a shadow brightness. Alright. So if you're unhappy with... Uh, how bright or dark the shadows are, you can go in and change them. This can be helpful if you're not using global illumination, for example. You can see here that it can be quite dark in certain areas. So now you can actually have the option to go in and increase the sh uh, shadow darkness if you like. As you can see, it did brighten up the shadows. This can be useful in some areas that can be quite dark. If you've got like a lot of trees or building areas. It's a nice day we're having. You can also make them even darker than what they usually are. You can hit the reset button in any of the folders to reset back to the defaults. In performance, performance has your parallax occlusional mapping, uh, a low quality POM setting, your GI quality, global illumination, specular, and your specular brightness. Now, there is a POM offset, which you can change on the fly. So if you're experiencing any sort of weird lines with your Perhaps occlusional mapping. Some of them might even have a line split straight through the middle of your texture. You can try and change the POM offset to see if this fixes the problem for you. Now you can also have change and control over the specular brightness. Alright, so as you can see here, you can see the specular coming through. Now, the specular can be dependent on the actual texture pack you're using. So, for instance, this one here, you can look at it and you go, wow, that's way too much, it's too bright. You can now come in and change it. So now the specular is a lot more subtle. So yeah, this can help you with certain texture packs uh, that you might be experiencing perhaps over bright specular or maybe not enough as that you can increase the specular as well. For something ridiculous like this. Uh, the next tab is just your waving elements, not much to go on there. So if you don't want things waving, you can come in and turn them on and off. Same with your god rays, you can turn the god rays off. The moon rays are basically like the god rays for night. Uh, no underwater rays, if you like to have your god rays you know, shining through while you're underwater, just turn that to off. Weather, your rain lens, if you don't like those little raindrops coming down your screen, you can turn that off. 
Uh, rain fog, there are two layers. You can sort of switch between the two or turn them both off. You can also increase the density of it. Uh, so for example, we can try and increase it here. So this is with a bit more fog. Less fog. Or you can turn the fog off altogether. Entirely up to you now. Now in details, you can have control over the night light, K brightness, you can turn your lens flare on and off, moon flare, uh, no indoor fog, so if you like the atmospheric fog to be indoors, you can turn that you know, off. Morning fog, color desaturation, torch brightness, so you can actually change the brightness of your torches and glowstones. Evening fog, atmospheric fog. Uh, for the night light, you can Turn it up to something ridiculously bright, as you can see here. Or you can actually turn it right down to something really, really dark. Uh, keep in mind though that when you do this, the moon pretty much does disappear. Uh, th this is probably more realistic, I suppose, because you don't want a super bright moon up in the sky and have everything around you this dark. Um, but it is up to you how bright you want your nights now. You can go through and tweak how you want it. The other thing you can also do is cave brightness. So say when you're in a cave like area like this, you can increase how bright it is in here. As you can see now, it is a lot brighter. So you don't need a torch to be able to see where you're going. Or you can make it very dark so you can barely see anything at all. Now the color desaturation, uh, we've got only a few presets, but you can just sort of tweak these. What we'll do? If you set it to 0 0.25, you'll probably find that you'll have more of a sonic ethers, shaders type of color tone to it. That's kind of a thing that you like. You can uh, take it down to 50. And as you saw from my other video, you can basically have it all the way down to black and white. Now the whole reason behind this preview version is that we do want to get feedback from you guys. Uh, if there's any of these numbers that you want, you know, to have extra ones in between. So, for example, with the the color desaturation if you want say like a 1.10, 1 1.2, 1 1.25, 1. whatever just let us know and we can add that to it. Uh, now for the torch brightness as you can see here this is basically as our as default.
changing this will make them either brighter or darker. As you can see in this one, they are now a lot brighter. Compared to say the default. The next one we have is clouds. In here we've actually got three different types of volumetric clouds that you can choose from. Uh, please only choose one. Do not have more than one of these going at a time. Otherwise you will experience either problems, crashes or frame rate drops. Um, Volumetric Cloud 3 is a new experimental one that I've only just put in. Uh, probably wouldn't recommend using that one. Volumetric Cloud 2 is the latest. And anytime you want to find out what any of these are, you can just move your mouse over them and it should give you a bit of a description. Not all of them have descriptions yet. Uh, soft fluffy clouds. Uh, that will completely remove the dither pattern but leave a bit of pixel noise to it. You'll see what I mean by that when you actually test it yourself. Uh, cloud plane. I'll leave that one off. That's old 2D clouds. They've got a bit too much performance hit. Cloud shadows. Cloud coverage as I've uh, gone over in the previous video. So I'm not going to worry about in this one. Water. In this one I've actually now included uh, color and transparency options in here. So if we go over to some say water. Right, what you're looking at here is the default color for continuum water. But if you actually want to go in and change that, I've uh, included a range of different color that you can choose from. Alright, so you can increase the color red if you wanted to. And now you've got red water. You can increase the color green. You can even change the transparency as well. So we can turn these colors right up. And you can increase the transparency all up to about 250 so it becomes non see through anymore. The same as you can turn it right down. To make it pretty much crystal clear. Hello. Lastly, the last tab we have is a MISC. This just holds a lot of things that we haven't actually allocated to yet. So you got held lighting on, which is uh, the light emitted from your torch while it's in your hand, different glowstone colouring, basically just things that we haven't allocated different parts of the folders yet. And of course at any time you want it to go back to default you just hit the reset button and done. Now this is a preview version, so what we're actually trying to do is gain info back from you guys. If you want more predefined numbers for say changing the color of the water, just let us know. Um, any other options that you would want to have available to you, let us know. Um, lastly, there are uh, new shaders for the end and the nether. Uh, these are now being worked on by Joey and uh, Robbo, who's new to Continuum. Uh, what actually happens now is that there are two different types of shaders which are designed specifically for these two realms. So if we go into say the Nether, You'll notice that it's no longer all messed up from the overworld shaders. And these are just the very beginnings of the nether shader. 
Um, we might look around and go, well, it's not too much, but if we actually turn the shaders off, this is what the nether looks like without shaders. And if we go back to, say, a version that doesn't have a nether shader, Right, so what you see now is a shader that hasn't been set up for the nether. As you can see, you can there is a lot of problems with it. But now, thanks to the latest Optifine, we can actually have specific nether and end shaders. So these are primarily being developed by Joey and Robo now. So these are, this is a very, very alpha version of it but yeah these are some pretty exciting things that are happening and yeah if you go into the ender the shaders were pretty much fully disabled as we don't actually have them created for that realm just yet um, I did actually try going there before but uh, the end in this world is kind of buggered so yeah Hopefully you enjoy this uh, preview version and let us know, like I said, what extra things you want added. Well, that's about wraps it up, so I'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.